to competitive to you? And what do you think of their model? Because it seems like, in my experience with it, there are two people motivated to fill out a, a, a glass door. Great experience or people who got fired or laid off yep. and then people who the ceo said go write a great review it's to counterbalance well them. it's like <laughs> a holding a company hostage model right yeah. and um it works in some ways but i just don't think that's again this is probably the one and only somewhat negative thing i want i just don't think it's the right way of building long-term value because people don't people join companies but they leave teams and managers the people that they work with every day people join companies but they, but leave, they leave teams managing. and managers right that's fascinating and the experience you have on the ground every day and someone who's pissed off or maybe he was a good performer maybe he wasn't maybe he didn't fit whatever happened right like yeah. they p end up painting the picture of the company um, that's why our approach is more about decoding the dna on and what kind of people are going to fit in your unique team environment not just unique culture it's really interesting because Amazon, every person I talk to from Amazon who then goes and starts a company, like they're like, this is the greatest experience of my life, whatever. And then like, I wake up one Sunday and there's like a New York Times piece about how horrible and oppressive Amazon is to work at. And I'm like, wait a second. And like, we talked to 400 people who hate Jeff Bezos. I'm like, I have talked to 400 yeah. founders who say Jeff Bezos it's and the philosophy and Amazon built their career and is the greatest experience they've ever had. It's a type, right, that thrives in that unique environment. And there's a type that doesn't. But also people are complex. We can hold two opposing ideas in our head at the same time. We like to sometimes pacify ourselves. So can you imagine the pressure a company like Goodco has to get our culture right? And we don't always do that either. Right. There's going to be people bitching about like how shitty the experience was, how terrible I was or the manager was, and that's okay, right? As long as the people that are here, we keep them happier, longer, and more productive, and sort of give them interesting challenges so they keep doing better. Who's right? it better for, the manager or the for manager. the employee? I mean, really, this is for managers because managers are evolving into little CEOs of their teams, right? Whether you're a 10-person startup or a team of 10 people at IBM because that's where the core currency of operation is. That's the basic unit where you can create the most performance. In fact, managers, as a variable, if you scientifically look at it, have the largest impact on any employee success. It's, and there's no correlation between their skills or their GPA or the last employer they work for or anything like that. There's actually correlation with how they get along with their manager. Let's end on generations. A lot of people are deriding millennials or, you know, just like mm -hmm. when we were Gen X coming up, people ah, derided us sorry. a bit. What do you think of the generational switch, you know, generational attitudes, behavior, at work, is there a real clear delineation between boomers, oh, yeah. Gen X, and millennials? Absolutely. And what, what is it between Gen X, millennials, and then this next generation? Maybe? So we've done a lot of research on this topic, and I think millennials get a bad rap, right? Because you're entitled, and maybe that's true in some cases, but the reality is every generation bitches about the generation that comes after them. Their music's weird, you dress weird, you talk weird. Well, the music right? is just bad, let's be well, honest. I mean, millennial music is just terrible. Well, Nobody don't can play an break, instrument. Yo. It's just terrible. I mean, in our day, oh, we had people fun, like right? could I'm actually not a play an instrument. I'm not a millennial, but I identify with that because if you really yeah. think about it, it's like an, because the internet in many ways has like become steroids for who right. we are and who we can become. So we still are doing the same things you want to do 100 years ago, which is connect with people, get paid or get laid. Yeah. And the reality is we're just doing that on steroids now. And millennials just have this need for having a common set of shared values between their personal lives and their professional lives. They don't want to just punch out and go home like their dads did. Instead, they want to have this common set of beliefs that they believe in, and when they get that right in the workplace, they'll kill it. Like, we have some of the best employees in our companies are millennials because when they find that groove or they find the matrix, right? Do they want to work full time? Of course do they, they do. Yeah. They're but the hardest working people we've ever had at Goodco. That's the thing I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by and I've been really giving a lot of thought to is how much time do people actually want to spend at work? I think that one of the big opportunities for founders is to meet people where they are and say, if you want to work three days a week at night and weekends or some weird schedule and you just crush it, okay, fuck it, we'll do it. I mean, and, and I'm literally building yeah. inside.com around this premise of most of the great writers out there are like, I value my lifestyle. They want to be treated like adults, right? Yeah. And if you hire people that are responsible, like, what does it matter? Like the whole gig economy, freelance, work from wherever you are. Like I've had amazing designers in Bangladesh 
four dollars an hour when we were like a very early stage startup that has a design ethos of people that design in San Francisco. And this kid can barely speak English, yeah. right? And it's it was appropriate for Goodco at that stage, and and they did amazing work. They moved on in their career, and I think that's what it's about. It's like the the time, the windows of like how long we expect to stay with an employer, and to what degree has evolved and shifting, and will continue to shift. Yeah, I think Zuckerberg got that right. He's like, I think people can come to Facebook and do nine months or. 18 months and then go do something else and then come back and do good work. And I was like, he's crazy, but he's right. I think, yeah. I think we're actually using KPIs that are based in the industrial age sometimes to um, assess like how people add value and create, create like, like productivity, right? Um, and we're just living in different times with a different set of realities, so we need better tools to do that. All right, let's give some more a big round of applause. Cool. Yeah.